Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to talk about a topic that confuses a lot of my students. It's when I have a circuit, an electrical circuit, with switches. And so let me draw a quick circuit to show you what I'm talking about. So we'll have a circuit that looks something like this. And you'll notice there's a switch right here that can connect the middle path and usually they say something like at time t equals zero or something, or even they'll label this switch, they'll call it S sub one, for instance. And that's just notation, so don't get too hung up on that. And the question we often see is, when we flip the switch, what happens to the voltage, current, and power on the 50 and 20 ohm resistors? Usually they will not ask you for all three, voltage, current, and power, but I just wanna show you how we do that, so that way you'll be prepared for any of the three that they ask for. So the first piece of advice, whenever you have a circuit with a switch in it, draw both circuits, both with and without the switch flipped. So first I'll draw it in the switch open position and the circuit would just look like this. Same drawing as the original and put in the numbers. Now when the switch is open, the shortcut you should know is that wherever there's an open switch, that entire section of circuit is gone. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to erase it entirely because this is really what the circuit looks like. And all of a sudden, all we have is two resistors in series. And they're in series because there's just one road for the electrons to travel. And then I'll draw the switch closed position. This is gonna be very similar. It's just gonna have that 30 ohm resistor now, right there. And there we go, that's what the circuit's gonna look like. Now many students make the mistake of trying to kind of guess the answer from here. For instance, they'll say the 30 and the 20 are now in parallel, and we know parallel has the same voltage, so the voltage on the 20 ohm resistor stays the same. But everything I just said is misleading and leads you to the incorrect result, the voltage will not stay the same. So instead what you should do is, you should just focus on the switch open case first, find all three values, voltage, current, and power for the 50 and 20 ohm resistors, and then just compare it to when the switch is closed. There is a shortcut method, by the way, for this. I will teach you the shortcut method after we do it the long way, the right way, as I call it. And so now we're going to find voltage, current, and power on the open switch circuit. So what I would do here is, I see the two resistors are in series. I can combine them to just form one single resistor. That resistor would be 50 plus 20, so 70 ohms. I'm assuming you know how to do that. And then the reason why I'm doing this is now I can find the current going through, not just the resistor, but actually the whole circuit, because current is the same in series. And so then V equals I times R, our favorite equation, Ohm's law. This is for the whole circuit, which means I'm using the whole 100 volts and the whole 70 ohm resistor. Divide both sides by 70, and I'll get 1.43 amps. And again, that's the current for the whole circuit. Even if I go back up a picture, that 1.43 amps is going through the entire circuit because that entire thing is in series. So 1.43 amps there, or could have drawn it anywhere. And now I just wanna make a little diagram for myself for the switch open position. I have the 50 ohm and the 20 ohm resistors, and I wanna find voltage, current, and power. And what I'm saying is the current for both of them is 1.43 units or amps, not even gonna bother drawing the A. Now if I wanna find voltage, it's pretty easy. I'm just gonna do Ohm's law for the resistors individually. So instead of the whole circuit, the whole 100 volts, I would say voltage in, let's say the 50 first, is its current, 1.43, times its resistance, 50, and plugging that in a calculator will get me a voltage for the 50 ohm resistor, which I'm getting 71.5 volts. Finding the voltage then on the 20 ohm is basically the exact same thing. Voltage equals the current, 1.43, times its resistance, 20, and that'll get me a voltage of 
0.6 volts. Technically, when I add these two together, it's supposed to add up to 100 volts. I'm assuming because I rounded to 1.43, I'm not getting exactly 100 volts. I'm getting 100.1 volts total. But don't worry about that too much. It doesn't matter. You probably won't lose points on the test. And if you definitely want to get the right answer, you would not use the rounded number 1.43. I would have used the whole decimal 1.42857 which is a lot. And then to find power at this point, very simple. Power is equal to voltage times current. Power technically has three equations, by the way. It's also equal to I squared times R, and it's also equal to V squared divided by R. All three of these equations would work for this problem. I'm gonna use the first one because I have the voltage and the current right here, ready to go. So the power for the 50 ohm would be 102.2. Units are watts, but I don't really care. And then for the 20 ohm, I get 40.9 watts for the power. And again, all of those numbers are for the switch open position. Now we just have to do the exact same thing we just did for the switch closed position and then compare my answers, see what increased, see what decreased. But unfortunately, the switch closed position will be a lot harder because of that third resistor in parallel. So the first thing I would do for the switch closed one, I would have to combine resistors again. This time I'm combining these two in parallel first because they are in parallel first before the 50 ohm is in series, which will be the second step. So I have to combine these resistors in parallel. That's the annoying one over math that we love so much to the negative first power. And miraculously, I chose nice numbers. So we will get 12 ohms for the total resistance on that portion of the circuit. And then I'm just going to redraw the entire circuit. Still with the 50 ohm up top, but now with just one resistor there on the right, which is now 12 ohms. The 50 and the 12 are in series now, which means I can add them normally to get a total resistance of 62. And yes, I'll draw the whole circuit again, now with just that one 62 ohm resistor. And then from here, we're doing the same thing we did before. We are gonna use Ohm's law for the whole circuit with the battery. And the reason why we're doing that is to find the current, the total current. So that's gonna be 100 equals I unknown times 62. Divide both sides by 62. And we'll get a current of 1.61 amps. So it looks like initially the current is higher than before, before it was 1.42 amps. But don't be so quick to write that as the answer. And the reason why is we now have to work backwards until we eventually get to the 20 ohm resistor again. So one more time, we found 1.61 amps, that's the total current. Working backwards one step, all of these are still in series. So in other words, that's also 1.61 amps for that entire circuit. At this stage, you should also find the voltage in both of these resistors. That can easily be done by using Ohm's law for the resistors individually. So voltage equals the current, 1.61 times resistance, 50. And so for the 50 ohm resistor, I'm getting 80.5 volts, which is an increase from before, before it was 71.5. So it looks like voltage went up on the 50 ohm, but I'll write that formally later on. And then for the 12 ohm resistor, voltage equals current, 1.61, times the resistance, 12, giving me a voltage on the 12 ohm of 19.3 volts. Again, because I rounded, these two voltages are not going to add to the total 100, but it will get close enough, so I don't really care that much. Again, you can use the actual value for current to get exact values. The exact value for current was actually 1.61290326. But anyways, that's the voltage in the 12 ohm resistor. If I go up one more level to right here, I actually do want to challenge you, what currents and voltages do we know so far based on the last picture? You can take a minute to think about it. Pause the video. Okay, and here's what we do know for sure. The total current in this portion of the circuit is still the same 1.61 amps as before. When it splits off into parallel, 
these two currents here in blue are not going to be 1.61. They will add to 1.61. In other words, the left path could be one amp, the right path could be 0.61 amps to add to the total 1.61. I just made up those numbers as an example, but that's what is gonna happen. For voltage, we do know the 50 ohm resistor has 80.5 volts. The plus side and the minus side don't really matter that much, but it would be this configuration in case you're curious. And the 20 and the 30 together is the 19.3 volts. But now is when you use that property we mentioned earlier. Which one am I referring to? Resistors in parallel have the same voltage, which means both the 20 and the 30 get that 19.3 volts. And so therefore, the only thing left I don't know is the current. I really only want the current in the 20 ohm. I actually don't care about the 30 at all. And to find the current in the 20 ohm resistor, I'm just using Ohm's law for the 20 ohm resistor, which means I'm using the 19.3 voltage, current still unknown, resistance 20, just divide both sides by 20, and I'll get 0.97 amps for the current on that resistor. So then the last thing I'll do is, I just kinda wanna add to that table I was making earlier. So again, the left, these are the numbers we had already for the open scenario. Now I'm just gonna fill in what we just found out for the closed, which was 80.5 and 1.61 for the 50 ohm. And then for the 20 ohm, that was 19.3 volts with a current of 0.97 amps. And then to find power, again, I'm just multiplying voltage times current, very easy. So for the 50 ohm, I'm getting 129.6 watts. And for the 20 ohm, I get 18.7 watts. And so now we can see exactly what happened to every single value here. Looks like voltage increased, current increased, and power increased. All of them increased for the 50 ohm. While it looks like the exact opposite happened for the 20 ohm, the voltage decreased, current decreased, and power decreased. Again, this is the long way of doing it. This is the way I would do it on the test unless I was really strapped for time. Your answer would be just the word increase or decrease, unless of course they asked for the actual numbers. And as promised, I told you there's like a shortcut you can do. I do not recommend using this shortcut because it literally just takes years of practice, honestly. And your exam is probably like, you know, next week or in two weeks. So I probably would not recommend doing that. Okay, so the shortcut method basically goes like this. When I add a 30 ohm resistor right here, what happens to the total resistance in the circuit? Does it go up or does it go down? Your first inclination would be to say, well, I just added a resistor, so resistance should go up. But nope, when you add a resistor in parallel, the resistance will always decrease. So in other words, when I add that 30, the total resistance of this part goes down, which we did see, it decreased from 20 to 12 ohms which then decreases the entire resistance in the circuit. And then you have to ask yourself, what does a lower resistance do to your overall circuit? And the answer would be an increase in the current. And you might be wondering, why is that? The reason why is in Ohm's law, V equals I times R, voltage stayed the same if we're talking about, again, the whole circuit, because that's just the battery, the 100 volts, that didn't change. So then if you're decreasing the resistance, then the only way that makes sense is if you're increasing the current. That's what we saw, if I scroll back up, that's what we saw on the 50 ohm resistor. The current increased, it went from 1.43 to 1.61. However, I do have to be clear, it only increased the current in the 50 ohm, it actually decreased in the 20 ohm. Why is that? Well, because again, if I draw this little representation, the red current was the total current but when I get to these two parts in blue here, that's where the current's gonna split up. Even though the total current increased, we can see that the 20 ohm resistor actually decreased in current. And the reason why is because before the 20 ohm resistor was getting all the current, now it has to share with the 30 ohm resistor. And so even though the total current went up, 
from 1.4 to like 1.6. This is not exact math, but imagine just cutting the current in half, and that's kind of like the new current in the 20 ohm, because it had to get split in half. So back down here, when I drew this arrow, lower resistance equals increased current. I do have to mention that is for the 50 ohm, but it's going to have a second effect for the 20 ohm resistor that is going to decrease it. And again, the reason why is we had to share the current with the 30 ohm resistor. So two effects happened right there. Next with that increase in current, specifically on the 50 ohm, because again, Ohm's law, V equals I times R, the resistance in the 50 ohm remained the same. The current we just had increased, that is going to be an increase in voltage. And again, this is for the 50 ohm specifically. We're going to see the exact opposite thing happen on the 20 ohm. A decrease in current on the 20 ohm causes a decrease in voltage in the 20 ohm resistor. And again, that's Ohm's law. Current decreased, resistance stayed the same because we're just looking at the 20. Okay, and then finally, we can say for the 50 ohm, which we had an increase in voltage and current for the 50 ohm resistor, that is definitely going to increase the power on the 50 ohm resistor. And likewise, we had a decrease in the voltage and current on the 20 ohm resistor, which did cause a decrease in power for the 20 ohm resistor. So that's how you can use the shortcut method. As you can see, even using the shortcut, it's still a series of logic here. One, two, three, four, five, six steps into thinking. So don't ever look at this and think you can reasonably figure out the answer just by looking at it and getting the answer in like 15 seconds. And the reason why I'm emphasizing that is because I almost guarantee you, your professor is making it seem like you can answer this question really quickly just by reasoning it out. The truth is, no. Unless you've been doing this for years like me or your professor, it's gonna take you a while to get this answer even using the shortcut method. And it's very easy to mess up the shortcut method, which is why I don't recommend it for my students unless you're really pressed for time. I do recommend doing it this long method, which involved drawing the circuit twice, even making up your own numbers if you have to, because sometimes they don't give you numbers, they give you variables. But yeah, I generally recommend the long way of doing it. Okay, and that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.